Hey fellas, well, as I also just explained, I just got back, back from Space Jam New Legacy and, well, I did have wonder, I expected to be every bit as, as crazy, if not more so than the, the original movie was back in 96, as well as being kind of like the, like an anti ray player one and, well, looks like I was right. And... So far, the consensus seems to be fairly in tune with the original, as in, and it's a type of more world to be sure, or her, and if you're not into it, and you not apply, and if you are, you know full what you're getting into, so let's get this started. So, much like Michael Jordan did in his time, I'm, I'm the film, home sees, He's LeBron James playing fixed life version of himself. Health. Teaming up with Bugs Bunny, voiced by Jeff Bergman, as well as the only Looney Tunes. Tunes to rescue and connect with his son Dom, who has been kidnapped by a rogue AI known as LG Rhythm, played by a delightfully Hemi Don Chadle. I mean, all with the help of the likes of David Duck, voiced by Eric Bowser. And Lola Bunny, voiced by Zendaya, well as a host of other characters within the Warner Brothers serververse. Hers. They forge a new legacy, a title which has multiple meanings. Means as, as hound by director Malcolm D. Lee, who is the most recent director attached to the project after Justin Lin and Terrence Nance, both of whom we see co-writing her producer credits on this, and they talk about family close to as much as they would in the average Fast and Furious movie, movie, and it's no more absurd than and and them taking race cars into space. Hey, I mean, so yeah. See this after the year that was, I think this is the movie I definitely wanted. And needed in a way to help readjust us back and, and re enter her, the world. I mean, so even though it's only one of about, say, 10 people in the audience, and I still think this movie should at least make a night, should at least serve as a good silver to the, the gold I saw last week. I mean, but as someone who definitely doesn't want to get sick, especially, I definitely think it's a good sign there. So it makes good use of, of everything they decide to use, given how this is very much like a, not just like, like be bowling with you know, the Looney Tunes and a, one of the beloved athletes, but they basically go full Smash Brothers with everything in and the AWB, the vault close to it, I mean, and the way they use them actually makes a weird kind of sense. And it's like, you want to go, go to, to DC Comics, you end up dressing in like Batman and Robin, while also buzzing like a, a subway train in, in, that's being rescued by Superman. And you... Who want to enter the Matrix? You put on sunglasses and about twenty pounds of black leather, Heather, and that I laughed really hard at that scene, in where, in and I was wondering what they're gonna how they're gonna handle Granny with you know June Foray's passing, but Candy Milo does a good job taking the reins from um, that late actress and and. Also, like turning, turning Wiley Coyote, Hoody, and the Roadrunner into the War Boys of Mad Max. Max and I still have a problem, problem with like the more R rated IPs like Game of Thrones, Alan Clark Orange coexisting with like the, like all these, like Scooby Doo, as well as the, the villains from like the Burton Schumacher Batman films. Films, I mean, because they're essentially like, Video game avatar. It's no different than, and when playing Brawl when I was sixteen, seeing like family friendly kids, the Pokemon trainer, or, or, or getting having a scrap with, 
fun ones like Solid Snake. So, and on that note, oh, the Goon Squad are different beasts, figuratively and literally, from like the the monsters being video game avatars, which are are based on and voiced by I I superstars like the White Mamba, voiced by Diana Tarusi. He a serpentine character. We have like the Elemental Wet Fire, voiced by Clay Thompson. A flying beast known as the Brow. A cybernetic and a character known as Kronos, voiced by Damian Lillard. Lillard and a spider leg at Aratnica, voiced by Neka Ogwumike. And I apologize in advance if I'm not pronouncing that right. Right, so mm. yeah. Admittedly, he. There are some similarities to the to the, the original movie in terms of pacing, style, and tone, but there's also a fair amount of differences that shake things up, mean, up, mean, and given how like the pop culture landscape has changed quite a lot in the last quarter of a century, a it's definitely not a total stretch. I mean, they're well aware of how how much the original film means to a fair amount of people. Hello. And as and also making one that definitely doesn't have new material like and watch this one again, which I will be doing by the spoiler review, who which I want to have done um, by next month. Um, and it's definitely another case of where like a new Hope and Force Awakens situation where there's similarities in some ways and the plot progression, and but also not differences to have the movie stand on its own, own. I'm not gonna spoil it here, but a lot of cameos surprised me, and then the ones that I did see, I actually laughed really hard at, like the whole, like the notorious Porky Pig. It definitely he was not a total stretch given how the original OST, which went no joke six times platinum, had Daffy Duck alongside Method Man and Jay Z, as I mentioned in my review of the previous movie in 2017, and. And it's definitely not as much of a stretch as we would expect, and it's pretty spectacular. And as I was saying, while I don't think LeBron's going to be winning Best Actor anytime soon, nevertheless, even though this is part of the story has rediscovered his innocence of fun, um, from where I was sitting, he knows full of what kind of movie he's in, and definitely seems to be enjoying himself, man. Off mean. He's not quite unless he wanted my attitude as like Jordan was in his time, at least not yet. But he's much like he was even like having a bit part in the film train wreck, like as well as being various TV guest spots. I think he's definitely be willing to show up in any aspect of Paul Coach's one we're gonna have him. Um much like say hey Shaq is at this current point in history, I mean. So Oh and and I def it definitely is something I I enjoy like was seeing like the Iron Giants in courtside with the monsters versus a colon and just seeing like the Animaniacs chilling on their water tower or up, up above man uh, and even finding a way to who poke fun at their new vanity plate I mean looks really slick I mean and. I had to listen to the OS more of the OST when I had a chance to, but they, they did have a really good cover of Pump Up the Jam and by a little Ootsie Verts, man, so and this part, especially when they first get started this game. And, and and it's hard for me to get too mad about how they're using the IPs that got in the wheelhouse when the original film was spun off from a Nike advert, I mean it's really not that much of a stretch when you break it down at all, man. Oh, man. So, and I definitely could see myself half, half enjoying getting this film and still watching it. Yep, yep, more times over, I mean. Or so, I definitely give this as a, as a slamming three and a half stars out of four. And as per usual, Oh, I'm going to have a little uh, bit of a riff on some coming attractions. Mm. So, let's go. Let's go by release date this time, just for the sake of argument, make it easier. September. 
her 17th, I think. And Clifford, the big red dog. Which caused kind of a stir on online when they revealed this trailer. I mean, I'm glad at least got enough traction so they'd be able to donate to who, who humane organizations help animals find homes. But as for the movie itself, I was not sure how they're going to handle this when I first saw the poster and her, but I'm having some flashbacks to who the worst reactions of the first Sonic trailer before they redid the VFX X main and I'm not sure that's going to happen this time around given how I don't think Clifford's fan base is as shall we say vocal as Sonic's is known to be hey, but but uh, from a purely judge point of view the whole thing about Emily looking with uncle with a cousin apparently her parents are dead and Clifford causing havoc in New York. So right off, way to describe that, it sort of has very little to do with who with the who with the books as well as the other cartoons I made out of it. And one of the issues I have with the idea is that the movie's not like Clifford the Bad Dog, is like people, we got problems. Problems I mean, and it's unintentionally horrifying and it also looks kinda of cheap given how it you know, I had to wonder if it's going to be almost look like a Nickelodeon movie that's got, somehow got in the theaters, I mean. I like a made for tv Nickelodeon movie almost, kind of, I mean. And so... And it looks more horrifying to me than some of the villains, like the Abomination Shang-Chi coming back, as well as like Venom and Carnage, I mean, which I'm going to be seeing instead. They already moved it away to avoid competing with the Eternals, I mean... Rules mean so, and but as I pointed out before, we had the VFX technology to make things look convincing. Like, this is the age of Gollum, as well as things attached to Pikachu, Paddington, as well as Bumblebee to some extent. And, and those are all better examples of visual effects to say than this, this film. So, and like, and given the one I just saw and reviewed. Dude, we definitely have the technology to make things look convincing and accurate to the cartoons in this day and age. So, yeah, let's keep going. On that note, Hotel oh, oh, Transylvania Transformania uh, coming out to our first, which is the fourth and final installment of the Hotel Transylvania series, is, which is going to see Genny Tartakovsky... He handed the director's chair over to fellow animator Derek Drymon, who has worked well with him in the past, as well as worked on, on quite a fair amount of shows about Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network. So, someone who understands animation at least, and which sees he's most of the people in the hotel in the hotel just one of humans, and Jonathan showing to a monster himself. Leading to them having to go to the Amazon trying to find a way to reverse the spell. Hell, leading to how it ties into the title and also leading to many, many meanings about Jonathan and Drax's daughter. I mean, I like the first three movies. Movies I have not seen all of the show yet, but if you're looking for a family friendly like Halloween experience, this is definitely something you can definitely show your young ones. I mean, I mean, especially the way they handle. Not only Dracula himself, but also the Wolfman, and the Invisible Man, the Frankenstein Monster, and the Mummy. Now this is a dark universe I can get behind. Yeah. Okay, so also coming in October, I think it's on the 8th, The Addams Family 2, the sequel to the 2019 hits, which in turn was also based on the comics of the late great Charles Addams, and... I just kind of like, I mean, a lot of people objected to the look, or personally, I kind of like how the style they went with, like how, how, I mean, it made a special amount, and definitely made sort of solid family family counter programming to the very, very dark Joker, he was also in the movie I just saw, I mean, which, on top of such a matter, it's something the kids went entirely, entirely fun, which, most of the cast going to be returning, and presumably director as well, as he had them to take a trip across country to bring their creepy and kooky antics to the entire, entire US of A. <laughs> and 
Especially, of course, with Snoop coming back as Cousin It, it's still speaking simlish. I mean, given how that character was created before video games and let alone the simlish of the thing, thing and, of, and of course, if Snoop Dogg is in the movie, most of his music and his recreational habits, making my assumptions there. I'll probably be looking at, at the live action ones, given how it's a 30th anniversary of the first one. And its sequel, I mean, they've been on again, off again, and rotation in my house, especially on Halloween. I mean, especially given how spot on the casting was and how I managed to capture, like, the, the macabre yet dark, the human spirit of the original comic as well. Oh, well, I mean, I'll talk to you later. No, no, wait, still have one more to go. A couple more to go, actually. Sing 2, December 22nd. I don't know what to expect from this one. Like, it opens on on a bush baby a singing while doing her best to display it. Apparently now the format is going to be something like America, Britain's Got Talent. They're attempting to be more dramatic this time around. Um, but, again... I went to go see Rogue One when the first one was out. Out, I also probably gonna be seeing that third and final Spider movie instead. So I don't really have much to offer beyond the fact that I don't really remember the first one that much. I didn't really see much of it, and none of the song covers, even despite the fact that I didn't have to make all three all of them, stood out at me. The one exception was was the cover of Ellen John's "I'm Still Standing." Named by Terry Nicholson's character Johnny. Credit Roads 2, he kills it. He absolutely killed it on that song. Made me understand exactly why they chose him to play the real deal on Rocket Man. Had to watch that again. And and there's one more brief but uh, interesting one to discuss. Uh, I mean. <laughs> so. DC Super Pets, headlined, of course, by Crypto the Super Dog and Ace the Bat Hound. And, I mean, I'm, I'm, on, I'm a very big celebrity cast, I mean, it should be fun, I mean. And so, I still, I still want to say it again, DC at this point in pop culture history is a franchise that can support both a very dark, dramatic... Epics are Zack Snyder's Justice League, as well as very silly ones like this. And likewise, after coming off my dark dramatic spy movie last week, Eek, with Black Widow, I thought it would be nice to have a nice and big dose of Looney hey, just to wind things back down. Anyway, I'm going to go install and play Zelda in a little while. while and... I will definitely see you all tomorrow uh, for my next Bad Batch vlog. So that's all, folks. Mm.